going. Go, go, go. Jana Griva. And you'll see in, of course, it's a little covered in snow, but the yellow of the rock, a lot of that is sulfur, iron oxide with all the red and orange streaking. So a lot of concentrations of these uh, variety of minerals that cause the decoloration of the rock itself. During the summer, he needs to do free solo here on this wall. There you go. <laughs> We're watching the movie last night. It's a, oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> you see it? Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. It's gonna be dead. dome is essentially its own microclimate. It's causing more snow flurries, ice formations, and building that dome higher or shorter how, as the winter wears on. How high have you seen? How high does that dome get? I, I've seen it reach up to about 200 feet. Um, yeah, there's there's been times when you almost can't see the waterfall at all behind that thing. Well. Oh, there's a walkway down there? Well, um, so in the summer, can't really see it. There's kind of on the other side of that slope with the trees across the way, uh -huh. there's a metal staircase that winds down halfway down into the canyon. So you are kind of almost right up to the waterfall itself. No, I, but I didn't see it. But oh, I was yeah. Oh, that show. one. Yeah. So this is a trail called Red Rock. As you can tell, it's not maintained in the winter. Yeah. Um, there's about 200 steps leading down that, but that just leads you just to kind of that outcropping there. The other one was where over, over here? Yeah. This entire canyon stretches 21 miles one way, heading north. So the Yellowstone River flows from south to north.
hot springs, mud pots, and fumaroles or steam vents. We have over 10,000. And this is a great place, especially out here in the winter. With all that cool air and all that hot water, you really get a great sense for just how active we are with all the steam you see here around here. So as we make our way down to Old Faithful, we probably won't be stopping much more between here and Old Faithful. If we do see some other wildlife, especially bison herds that are in a good area, we'll certainly take more time on our way after Old That looks pretty standard. That um, I would say that's actually right around 120, 130. The thing is on a windy day like today, of course that wind helps to knock the water down a little bit. But what's great is in the winter, it's always a gamble whether you'll actually see water coming out or if it'll all just be steam with the cool air. So on a nice windy, sunshiny day like today, it's a beautiful eruption. So while it does average 130 to 150 feet, um, we have had taller eruptions. The tallest eruption ever recorded for Old Faithful was 211 feet. Whoa. How do you measure eruptions? So, uh, <laughs> we eyeball. So <laughs> over in the visitor center, we actually used to have a tool called an alidade, very similar to how sailors would uh, measure the horizon or the, the stars off the ocean. Um, and that would get us within uh, roughly five feet of the accurate um, height, we believe. Unfortunately, our alidade broke a couple years back, so now we eyeball off of one of the trees behind us. So the kind of shorter tree behind us that stands by itself. We know the distance from us to the tree, the distance from the tree to the geyser, and the distance from us to the geyser, so we can triangulate and get a rough guess. 
Oh, absolutely. Did it record? Yeah. Yes, it did. Perfect, thank you. People ever try and get up there, like close and bathe under the. You would not believe. Um, <laughs> it, it's not uncommon to have, especially in the summer, because throughout the winter we average about forty thousand people coming to the park. In the summer we average four and a quarter million. Yeah. So a lot more people. Um, for example, right now it's a very winter, per winter forty thousand. Yeah, roughly forty thousand. Sometimes a little bit closer to sixty thousand on a really busy winter. Um, like right now, this is much more of a uh, personal experience with Old Faithful. Yeah. Just us and maybe 10 other people. In the summer, you'd be watching it with about 1,000 other people. Oh, wow. This but summer... You have, you have rangers out here all day long, basically, to keep people Yeah, focused. Yeah, absolutely. And that, that uh, mostly goes back to my department, the education staff. We're the ones that are... to see at least one more herd before you, we leave the park. Now, as you can tell, oh, throughout the winter, a lot of bison like to come into these thermal areas. Of course, it's a nice personal sauna with all that steam still dripping across. A lot of those areas have uh, hot and heated water so near the surface that it melts the snow, melts the ice, makes it easier to access what grass there is for grazing. So it's uh, really not uncommon all winter long to see these bison coming into these thermal areas, taking advantage of that food source, taking advantage of that heat source as well. They, they almost like froze the, because they got distracted by us, you think? Or? That, that very well could be. Now the thing is with, with bison, they usually aren't moving too quickly anyways unless mm. they need to. Yeah, it is very possible, especially because this is a, a herd with calves. Uh -huh. Those mothers are probably standing stock still oh, watching see. us, okay. keeping an eye on us, just making sure we're doing what we're supposed to. Uh -huh. But this is a, a herd that would be pretty well acquainted with seeing people here in these vehicles uh -huh. go past day to day. So it's uh, really not uncommon all winter long to see these bison coming into these thermal areas, taking advantage of that food source, taking advantage of that heat source as well. They almost like froze the because they got distracted by us, you think? Or? That, that very well could be. Now the thing is with, with bison, they usually aren't moving too quickly anyways unless mm -hmm. they need to. Yeah, it is very possible, especially because this is a, a herd with calves. Those mothers are probably standing stock oh. still watching us. Currently where we stand, that magma chamber of the Yellowstone supervolcano lies about eight miles beneath us. It has been very active in its history. Now we know it's still active because that heat from the magma chamber is still feeding into the water of our geysers, heating up our hot springs. But knock on wood, we don't see the volcano we're up today. Couldn't put a bit of a damper on your trip. However, it has been very, very active in its lifetime. The last most recent major supervolcanic eruption occurred about 640,000 years ago. But even after that eruption died down, we were still having volcanic activity. As that magma chamber continued to pitch and shift and apply pressure on the crust, 
they found weaknesses and oozed out lava. Now that lava formed into these high cliffs as it cooled into rhyolite volcanic rock. So what we're seeing here on either side of us are these lava flows, the one we've been traveling. <laughs>